We are happy to welcome all of you to celebrate pop culture in Ghent. For this year's Q&A, things are going to be slightly different. As you may know, SAG AFTRA, the union that represents many of our guests, is currently on strike against the major studios, networks, and streamers. The union has put together a set of guidelines to allow our guests to still participate at our event during the strike and to come and meet all of you here in Belgium. These guidelines require our guests to stay away from discussing specific shows or characters by name and to avoid comments that might be seen as promoting projects that fall under the union's strike order. Therefore, actors appearing at our show will be happy to discuss other, more general topics about their lives and work. In order to be able to proceed with our Q&As, we kindly ask you to avoid asking questions concerning the actors' projects and characters. The team at FACTS really supports the actors' current efforts to secure a fair deal. But equally, we understand that this may be frustrating as many of you are eager to show your love for their work. So, here's how it will happen today. In the first part of our journey, our moderator will ask you all questions. Afterwards, you will also have the opportunity to ask questions, as long as you respect the strike rules. And even if you cannot ask character-related questions, just feel free to express your love and enthusiasm for our guests. The entire FACTS team wishes you lots of fun at the show. Adventure in the forest, eager to explore. And now the winding fairy path shall guide you to my door. This magic moss and shrubbery for the decades of the making. Set for the charge to get your final quaking. So, fly on the fields, come over to this event and play. Your hero is approaching just mere seconds away. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kevin McNally. Hello, Kevin. Hello, nice turnout for a Sunday, huh? Yes, it is. Some people... Do you know the stage is on fire? Yes. We always wanted to have a guest burning on stage, Great. so... Uh... Now, ladies and gentlemen, we had a Q&A yesterday in which there were about 13 rounds of applause for Kevin. Yeah. And he really liked that, so we should really break that record today. You did the first one. Let's have a second one. Is this your first time in Belgium? No, no, I've been to Belgium uh, many times. Um, a couple of Comic Cons, and I've also visited because I like the place. Um, and uh, in fact, I, I spent a bit of time in Brussels just before I came here. And uh, I might, before I leave, um, make a bit of food, I think. But it's been lovely to spend the time um, in the center of uh, Ghent, because I was a little bit outside last time I was here, so it's been very enjoyable to you know, to see all the beautiful architecture that you have here. Yeah, and Ghent is the most beautiful city of Belgium, anyway. It so. really, really is. <laughs> now, Very nice. is there anything that strikes you as being particular or peculiar about Belgians or Belgium? Um, many things are very peculiar about Belgians, I've been discovering today. Um, and, I, and, I, and I'll tell you the worst thing, it's actually quite a nice game that I play, is when you come up to my, uh, my, uh, my table, I like to try to guess which language you speak. I'm getting it about right once every 15 people. And, uh, I don't even know what it says. And, I, you know, it's, it's, it's lucky for me if it's French, because I speak a bit of French, but, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to learn a bit of Flemish for the next time that I'm here, I feel, would be a, would be a good idea. I hope you're keeping track of these. Yes, yes, that's it. Good. So, we can continue the training in French. Oui, certainement. 
Ok, essayons. Uh, Peux-tu... No, no, I can speak French, I can't understand it. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so, as we talked about this yesterday, there's a drinking game which goes like, can you name three famous Belgians? I yes. believe you succeeded yesterday, so, can you name five famous Belgians? No. <laughs> no, I, I won this yesterday with the three. You did. Uh, I can name four. Go on. So, we've got, um, Hergé, obviously. We have Hercule Poirot, if you exclude, um, include people who aren't real. We have René Magritte, and we have Audrey Hepburn. Wow, that's a round of applause. And in fact, if I, if I hadn't wasted my time researching Belgian beer last night, I could have researched famous Belgian people and got another one, but I didn't. I got, I got caught out by the beer. Now, I don't know, if, was anybody here yesterday? Yes. As you might remember, there was one topic we didn't brush upon because we didn't have enough time. No. I, I believe... I, I so wanted to bring it up, but I yes. just... You never had time. time. And it, I looked it up last night and it changed my life. Because yes. ladies and gentlemen... Kevin, because I had to have written a book. <laughs> and for those of you who weren't here yesterday, um, Part of the reason I've brought it over is to help solve the trilingual problem of your country and get you all to learn English. And so this is the teaching tool by which you will all learn to speak English. Uh, it's very inexpensive. Uh, come to my table. And uh, as I I'm here to tell you that I've never been able to afford a Mercedes car. <laughs> But if I sell enough of these books today, I might be able to get the down payment on a new one. So, for the sake of my transportation, come and buy my book. Did I mention I'd written a book? Now, Kevin, obviously you're an actor and a writer. Um, can you tell us what's like a perk of being an actor? Well, um, as we touched on yesterday, um, I, I, I think about this a lot, and I particularly think about, you know, my family back home, it's very working class family who had to go out and do jobs they didn't particularly enjoy, and they had to use most of the hours of their week doing it. Um, so I very much appreciate that when I do go to work, um, it's something that I love doing. And I don't have to do it all the time. I can spend a lot of time preparing and, uh, or enjoying movies and researching. And I've taken up directing more and writing more, so I can, I can move from one thing to another. And I, I appreciate that just because of the sort of hardship I saw my own family go through in having to work, you know, six day a week, sometimes eight, nine hours a day. Um, very soul destroying, I think. So I've got it right, your father did a regular regular, regular job. job, yeah. And how encouraging was your family when he wanted to, he said, hey guys, I'm going to become an actor, was like, oh God, or good idea? No, very, they were very encouraging. In fact, I've, I've, um, I dedicated my book to my mum and dad because the gift that they gave me was imagination. Because my, they made, they both had regular jobs. My mother, loved to play music and loved to paint, particularly paint plates and things like that. She, you know, so she, she would buy some very, very boring uh, crockery, as we call it, uh, but she would uh, decorate it herself because she couldn't afford to buy expensive stuff. My dad wrote plays, he wrote novels, he never unfortunately managed to get, unfortunately managed to get one published, but he did write songs and um, he, uh, he got his songs recorded and published. In fact, one of his songs went to number four in Sweden in 1965, which I'm very thank you for And when I did first start to travel in Europe, I was going through Italy on a train, uh, and, I, and I had to change stations at a tiny little. A village, and I went into the local bar to get a drink, and there was a jukebox, and I went and looked at it, and my dad's song was on this jukebox, and I and I sort of played it, and um, I was very happy the next time I saw him to tell him that I played his song in a, in a tiny little bar in a 
small town in, in, in Italy. Wow. Yeah. And were they still around when you started becoming su successful? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, they, they were. They were both at uh, the premiere of the first three pirate films, which they can't they, tell you, can't say the name. But no pirate. I said it. Shit. <laughs> I'm not allowed. I'm not allowed to say pirate. Shit. I said it. Um, but so, so they, they did manage to see a, a little bit of that, which was nice. But it, you know, the very long-winded answer to your question, they were very supportive because I think the last thing they wanted me to do was what they, they had to do. And we talked about your parents, you also have kids. Was the fact that their father was an actor a blessing or a curse to your kids? Well, I'll never forget when the film that I can't talk about first came out. My children said, oh, yeah, you can't wait to go to school and tell everybody that you're in this big blockbuster hit film. And I went, wait a minute. I said, um, you might not get the response to that that you want. And indeed, they came home later in the day saying the kids had been really horrible to them because they thought they were bragging about their dad being in this film. So they've learned to be very cautious about, about you know, popular culture and being connected to it. Uh, which is sort of a shame, but um, it, it's a good life lesson to learn, I think. You often hear that, that, that kids of actors, they go like, no, I don't want to talk about my famous no, dad and mother. No, exactly. I, and I think, I, think that's, uh, I think that's something that, I mean, obviously it's not so bad for me because I'm a character actor, but, you know, if you're, if you're this son of a famous film star, you know, a really sort of top-notch film star, um, that, that can be a, a terrible weight to carry, I think. Yeah, I mean, if you talk about the colleague of yours in the movie, we can talk about and we can't name, but yeah. his first name sounds like whiskey, you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, I mean, imagine being his child and everything that has been going on in his divorce procedure must be horrible. Well, I mean, that's the other thing, that when, when things like that happen, your, your life is owned by the public. Um, I can pretty well go around killing people and nobody gives a damn, you know. It would, <laughs> well done. Um, I wouldn't even make the papers, I think, if I murdered someone, which is uh, rather disappointing to me. Um, but yeah, I, it, it's a thing. We, we talked about this yesterday. That um, I am really, really happy to have that I can walk around largely unrecognized, but occasionally people do come and say that they. Um, you know, that they like my work, and, and, and that makes it really enjoyable, and I get the best of fame and not the worst of it. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but there's a beautiful bit on the Graham Norton show with Mr. B, um, and he explains the thing that somebody comes up to him and he says, like, did ever, anybody ever tell you you're like the spitting image of that Mr. B guy? Have you ever been mistaken for somebody else or somebody in the streets? Like, yeah, yes, uh, I, I have, actually. Um, funnily enough, there is a... There is a newscaster in England um, who has recently been disgraced through a sexual scandal. And uh, somebody in the park the other day thought it was me, because uh, I do look a bit like him. So um, that was very odd for somebody to be commiserating that my career had been destroyed by a gay sex scandal. Because um, for a moment I thought, my God, did I get that drunk last Friday? I I don't know. But then I did also, I was in the theatre once, and um, uh, somebody uh, left a message saying, can I have a drink with you afterwards? Rather attractive young lady. And uh, she came and talked to me about the play and said how much she loved it. And she talked for about, uh, we talked about half an hour, three quarters of an hour. And at the end of it, she said, well, I've got, I've got to go now. It's been really nice meeting you. Thank you very much, Mr. Brammer, she said. And I said, that's quite all right, you can call me Ken. <laughs> um, so that was a bit of a kick in the bollocks, I'll tell you. Um, it, so that's, that's about the two major times I've been so uh, recognized. Oh, apart from the time somebody thought I was uh, Tom Cruise. Oh, yeah. The resemblance is uncanny. uncanny. Yeah, really. It's uncanny. I think I deserve to have a look for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You said, I mean, you just mentioned you did the theatre phase. If you had to choose, acting for television movies, theatre plays, or writing a book, 
What's your favorite? Uh, definitely, as I've got older, I've become less interested, less interested in the theater. I've done so much in the theater. But I, particularly now I, that I, I'm teaching students film acting, um, I'm directing short films, working up to try to direct my first feature film, I've become utterly obsessed with filmmaking in my latter years. And, and as I feel the, top, the clock ticking, um, I don't want to waste six months doing a play when I could be learning more about you know, the film industry. Oh, you're an exception to the rule, because often you hear people who are getting a little older, not you, obviously, they go like, yeah, I read yeah, Ian McCallum, Patrick Stewart, they, they want to do more theater plays than, than movies because they can actually interact with the audience. Well, that's, that's because they're bonkers, that's why. <laughs> Absolute lunatic thing to want to do. They're in their 80s, for God's sake. Yes. They'd be lucky to see the end of the run. <laughs> Did I mention my book? <laughs> Killing two birds with one stone there, flogging my book, and it's now down to two rounds of applause I need, that's all. <laughs> one more! Not now, later. I'm really happy with the three you did like that. I thought, if you're going to do the two and the one like that, we're going to have... Yes, it's better. Okay, they don't know this in Belgium, because I know in England, this yeah. is also a, uh, an insult. In Belgium, we don't do it. So you can yeah. that one. Do you do the middle thing? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. do. So, have you just middle thing? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> do you know where that comes from? I heard with the arches. The arches in Agincourt, yeah. They used to go to the French like that. <laughs> because, the, oh, I always heard there was, there was a battle where the winners cut off the two fingers of the loser, so they couldn't pull the arches anymore. So when you did this, it was they didn't have the fingers to pull the Well, arm. you'll learn something every day. I think a round of applause for him now. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, before we get to the audience, um, two final things. Um, yesterday, there was a question, which I thought quite brilliant, to James McAvoy from somebody in the audience. And the question was, if you could switch lives for one week with a celebrity, anyone, who would you wish to swim? Swap lives with, switch lives with. He chose Taylor Swift. Whose celebrity life would you like to live for one week? Um, I think it would be nothing to do with either the music uh, industry. I'd like to swap my uh, life with a very famous astronaut during the week in which they walked the moon. That's what I'd like. Wow. <laughs> done. 14 and done. But we can keep going. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Now, before we go to the audience, yesterday you made a solemn promise. Because those who were there yesterday saw Kevin take off one layer of clothing. And today, <laughs> I told you, I would remind you of that. Today you promised to go full naked. There is a story behind it. Because yes. in the theater place you were naked. Yeah, that yeah. was cringy. So, well, I was going to go fully naked today, but my lawyers have advised me that um, it's not popular in Belgium to see very elderly men take all their clothes off in the public. <laughs> I but, I did change my shirt for you today. For my love of space. I think we'll keep it at that. Yeah, we'll leave it there, yeah. shall we? Uh, I mean, you would generate so many divorces, all these women leaving their husbands for you and stuff. I know, I know, I know. All those divorce suits, it'd be terrible. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen. And my underpants are really boring as well. <laughs> granny pants. Granny pants. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, I don't know, I, I could guess. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what happens in a hotel stays in a hotel. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is your time to shine and to ask any questions you always wanted to ask to Kevin. So there's two microphones, one on the left, one on the right. Don't be shy, do like the lady there, it's amazing. Go and queue up. There's a few basic ground rules. English only, one question per person. Uh, no asking for free hugs or kisses or Kevin's hotel room number, I got that. Um, Please remember these track rules, so no direct questions about films and actors and series. 
and do speak in the microphone and articulate, please. We'll start on the left. Right, go ahead. Hello. Hi, so you mentioned your book and I was wondering if I come to your stand, if you will signature it for free? <laughs> no. And then I got a little... Because I want that Mercedes. <laughs> and what's the second half of the, your, your the very cheeky question? Uh, if you would be interested in a boat, how would you call it? A boat? Uh, I think I would uh, have to call it the Master Gibbs. I like that. Thank you. You're right. Kevin, good right. Oh, Hello. sorry. Hi. Hi. Um, Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, thank you for remembering me. Uh, I was wondering if uh, there was ever anyone that you really looked up to uh, that you had to work with and if you still get starstruck or if you did get starstruck. Well, I, I don't get starstruck by actors anymore. I still get starstruck, starstruck when I meet, a, 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 you know, rock musicians who I loved when I was younger and I, I've met a few, I've met a few members of Pink Floyd and, and of The Who. I get completely fangirling when that, that happens. But the people I look up to is when I started out as a 16-year-old boy in my local theatre, I still look up to, and I still know that some of them were still alive, the actors who, you know, taught me to be respectful towards audiences, who taught me my original, um, you know, my, my entrance into the, uh, into the world, not only of acting, but of it being an adult. I came from a very, as I told you, quite deprived background, which which, you know, at the time I grew up in the 50s and the 60s, there was ingrained in you sort of racism and homophobia and misogyny. It was part of, you know, growing up. And, and they taught me, pulled me up on that as a young man and said, that's not the way to live your life. So I respect those people so immensely. And when I see them now, I always remind them of all they did for me. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Can you do an impression of how you are when you are fangirling? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Waters. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, which country do you want to visit here in Belgium, but didn't you visit yet? What's that? Which uh, city here in Belgium do you want to visit? Which city do you oh, want to visit? Oh, uh, no, I've seen all the cities I want to visit here now. Thank you very much. I, I don't know, actually. Um, uh, whenever I come here, people recommend that I go to places I've already been to. So if anybody's got another suggestion for me, I'm all ears. So you've done Brussels? So when you come to my, um, did I mention my book? When you, um, when, you, when you come to my table to buy my book, recommend somewhere I should go. Uh, well, I should rephrase that possibly. Um, <laughs> Recommend the city in Belgium I should go to. You can recommend one now, isn't one? I, I, don't, I don't know. Either. Okay, we'll give it some thought and come and recommend something to me. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Where I'm from, uh, Hasselt, is this weekend uh, Geneva Fest. And my question for you was, do you have a favorite liquor? like uh, Geneva or a Belgian beer? Uh, yes, uh, we discussed this at great length yesterday. Um, and my life, and I, I think everybody of my age, is a, is a gradual losing of pleasure. Um, so, you know, the vodka went, the whiskey went, um, the red wine went, the white wine uh, went. Now I'm solely, solely a rosé wine man. Although, thank you. Although last night, last night I did make the mistake at the end of the evening of having a Manhattan, and I regretted it very much at the table this morning, and had to ask people to please keep their voices down when they were asking for my autograph. So I won't make that mistake again tonight. But thank, thank you. you. Hi. Hi. Uh, I have a following question. You said you wanted to learn a uh, Flemish word. Yes. Uh, which word in English would you like to learn? I, I can give it to you in Flemish. 
Well, because there's a young man standing behind you, I won't share with you the fact that I really like to learn the very worst forms of swearing in every language I go to. <laughs> um, I'm not allowed to do that probably. No, I know. you can do it privately when you come to buy my book. Did I mention that? I'll have to think about that one, um, because no I, I, all, all I've got now is a head full of swear words, that's all I can think of. If, if I might suggest then something differently, uh, if you do want to talk about uh, a certain type of movie, which uh, start with a P word, if you want to say that word, you can also use the D&D variant, where we say uh, var uh, variant sayer. Variant sayer? A varier, uh, var sorry, variant sayer. Because if you play with a background as a sailor, you can take a variant sailor, to which you are a bit unlawful. Oh, okay, great. That'll get me around the strike. Yes. <laughs> Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> round of applause. But I have not clue what you're talking about, but it is fantastic. <laughs> yes, hello there. Hi. You're still here today. How wonderful. Yes, I stayed here. I slept here. Oh, nice. Well, actually, in this room. I had under the bushes. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned earlier that you would like to swap lives with uh, the person who walked on the moon. I was wondering which fictional character from a movie or a book would you want to swap lives with and why? Well, um, I'm going to be really, really boring and say Dave Bowman from 2001 A Space Odyssey because he's the first man who gets to interact with an, an alien culture, and uh, it's as I talked yesterday, it's my favorite movie in 2001, and one of my favorite books. So, uh, interestingly enough, a science fiction book, which, um... Can I just add, it's a very good book, I started reading it yesterday. She did, she bought a copy, and, and nothing bad's happened to her. No? She's not here, but hey. That's true, that's how, she couldn't even go home, that's how much she loved the book. I didn't finish it yet. No, well, I'm, I'm not surprised. It's about 400 pages. I mean, you'd have to be a pretty fast reader to it's pretty, that. It's really good. Oh, good. I like it. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. There's another rave review, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, hello. This young man here. Hello. What is your favorite color? What's my what? Favorite color. Black. <laughs> Does that count as a color? Why? Um, I, I, I love dressing all in black. In fact, I wrote a song called Dressing Black once. Um, I don't do it here because I like to be a bit more brightly coloured, but um, I just think it's a really cool colour. Um, uh, as, as the lady behind you is demonstrating as we speak. And so is, um, I think, your father. Yes. Yes. Well, he's demonstrating how cool the colour it is as well. What well, is yours grey? Is that your favourite colour? What's your favourite colour? Science. Science. <laughs> have I? Which end of the stick have I got wrong? Here? <laughs> he's read your book, I think. I think he's <laughs> that was his brain. Um, did he not say what's your favorite color? Yes, he did. See. You know, in your own time. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I think it's blue. Blue? Blue. Is it blue? Thank you very much. <laughs> Round of applause for the very brave boy whose favourite colour is blue. And science. <laughs> By the way, Kevin, it's about being the astronaut who walks on the moon. I don't know if you heard this, but last week NASA revealed that if they couldn't get back to Earth, NASA would have just dropped communications. Yes, and they would have just let them die without knowing what would happen. Can you imagine? Oh, Our child okay. must have been there. Well, uh, I mean, it, it's so nearly. Um, if it wasn't for the genius piloting of Neil Armstrong, they wouldn't have even survived the landing. So um, he's remembered very fondly. Thank you, Neil. Round of applause.
Kom ze mee, joh. Yes, dear. Hi again. Uh, I was wondering, because you mentioned uh, playing a lot of character actors, and was this like a conscious choice, or was this something you uh, kind of rolled into with time? No, what, what, what happened was, is I started very young as an actor, 60, 50 years ago, and it, it was in a way too young. I hadn't really done anything in life apart from be an actor. So what happened was, is for the first 10 years of my career, I played very boring young men, you know, the boyfriends and husbands and stuff. So it wasn't really till I started hitting my 30s, I started getting character roles, and I thought that's what I want to do. And I sort of missed the boat as a, as a young leading man, you know, and I, and I wasn't really very good at that either. I was I just wasn't handsome enough, or I wasn't buff enough, or you know, whatever. So, um, I just always enjoyed being a character actor, and the benefits it now gives me is fantastic. Thank it's you. a very good question, thank you. Alright, three final questions. Go on. Dress in black, dress in black, there will be no turning back, no. Go. Um, so, you're uh, teaching acting class? That's funny, so you're teaching acting classes? Yeah. What is something a student did that you laughed so hard that you almost pissed yourself? Oh! I think um, um, the first entrance, um, uh, coming to the top of the stairs, tripping and falling down. Um, there's something about people falling over that really makes me laugh. And, it's, and it makes me laugh more because I know I shouldn't, because they probably really hurt themselves. And in fact, one of the first films I wrote and directed, um, people say, you've got to, uh, what I really wanted was to see, do you know what a milk float is? A milk float is a little electric vehicle that delivers milk. The milk used to have the yes, back yes. Yes. The And this film was called The Milkman. And he was a psychotic milkman who was trying to kill this actor. And I got him a scene that I thought was so funny where a little old lady on a Zimmer frame is walking across the road and the milk float runs her over. And people said, you think that's funny? I said, well, it makes me just hoot with laughter. So any, it, things are people falling over, I think. And when my students fall over, I love it. <laughs> Bear that in mind, you don't be working together. Hi. Um, Hello, princess. Uh, where did you find your inspiration for your writing your book? Well, where did I find, where did where? I find it? Um, anybody who's a fan of science fiction will know that the, there's the golden era of science fiction, the 1940s to the 1960s, Isaac Asimov, um, Arthur C. Clarke, Robert Heinlein, and that, that was what I grew up on. And when I decided to write the book, I, I mentioned my book. <laughs> I was very lucky, I thought I've got to buff up on, on, on that period of sci-fi. And, and exactly that year when I started to write it, Golan's produced a series called The 100 Best 20th Century Sci-Fi Novels. I bought the whole lot of them and I read as many as I could and then just got immersed in the whole style, you know, with good science behind it. And, and I read a lot of comedy because I wanted it to be a funny book as well. So a, a, a lot of sources, really. But a good question, thank you. Welcome. Final question, make it a good one, no pressure. Uh, welcome to Belgium. Thank you. Uh, and I wanted to, I wondered if you could uh, share a fun fact with us that nobody knows of you and you're secretly happy that no one ever asked. A cheeky one, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sharing it though, <laughs> for the very reasons that you've described. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I don't think there is anything like that because my life is too full of acting, writing, and directing to really have time for much else. Um, I, but what I, what I, the one thing people don't know about me is my capacity to down rosé wine. <laughs> there, there really is no volume of it you could put in front of me that I can't finish. And if you want to test that theory out later, when you come to buy my book, um, I, I can demonstrate my ability to drink rosé wine. That's fine. Hold on, that's my liver screaming. <laughs> now, Kevin. 
yeah, before we, we wrap this up, I have a personal favor to ask. And you all are into this. Yesterday, one of the people asked if you could sing a song. Ah. And half the audience had to make one noise. The other half had to make another noise. And I think this audience will be better than yesterday. Can we do it again? Yes, let's do it. Okay. I'm going to sing an extract from a film that I can't talk about. But all that half are going to make the noise of the wind in the rigging of a ship. And it goes like this. Come on, okay, let's come on. Try it. <laughs> Louder. No, no, not zombies. <laughs> and all this half are going to be the wind. So let's hear it both together. while I sing this. Fifteen men on the dead man's chest. A yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Drink and the devil have done for the rest. Yo ho ho. All together. And a bottle of rum. Give yourself a round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Kevin!